Dondi. Thanks so much, Sam. Dr. Todd Crump is the head of the emergency department at Lexington Medical Center. And Todd, we um, are amazed at how many people wade through the water because it's fun. Like the kids like going out and playing in the higher water in their yards. Now some people have to because they're trying to get to some, somebody or sure. something. But there, at this point, we're looking at contamination in the water, right? Certainly. Uh, whenever you have flood water, you have to consider it contaminated. It could have raw sewage animal feces, bacteria, parasites, viruses, so it is never safe to wade through those waters unless it's an emergent situation. And if that's the case, then the best thing you can do is what? I mean, hand sanitizer? Uh, well, certainly hand sanitizer can help to clean a wound if you don't have clean water to take care of it. Uh, obviously, any appropriate first aid kit would have any kind of antibacterial solution, mm -hmm. um, but the best uh, way is just to prevent it by staying out of the contaminated waters. So one of the main things to know is just because that was all wonderful rain water, well wonderful till we got the volume that we did, it is no longer rain water so to speak at this point. We need to consider it hazardous in some places. Exactly. Um, you know when the major flooding hit on Sunday I had to go to work that morning mm -hmm. and I remember seeing flood water coming up out of the manholes like a three-foot fountain and that's never good because mm -hmm. uh, you know that the water's been contaminated at that point. And then it can contain gasoline, uh, like I said, animal feces. Anything that's on the road can contaminate that water. You worked Hurricane Katrina treating patients. Correct. Which can't even imagine what that must have been like for you as a physician. Right. What were some of the things you dealt with with people being exposed to this water and as days go on and the water becomes more and more contaminated? What did you see there? Uh, lots of wound infections. Folks had waded through the water. They did not see what they were running into. So. And that, that's a good point because we're, we're talking about contaminated water, but it's the whole thing not knowing what you, you could get cut on. Exactly. Okay. And so they continued through these waters seeking safety. By the time they made it to my clinic, in Louisiana, the wounds were horribly infected. Hmm. Um, and so we dealt with a lot of that, including some pelvic infections in women who had waded through the waters. Wow. So for those who have to be in the water, because it's one thing we can you know, keep the kids out of that kind of thing, but for those who have to be in it for rescue efforts, the best thing is, is just a good hot shower at the end of the day? Or do they need to do more precautions? Uh, certainly a shower with antibacterial soap. If there is a wound, it should be cleaned uh, with the appropriate first aid kit and bandaged. You can use hand sanitizer, it would sting pretty bad, uh, but anything that can clean that wound uh, to keep it from getting infected. All right, but uh, otherwise, again, it's not that these are just warnings. You've actually had to treat people who have gone through flood waters. Certainly. And, and you know firsthand what that is. Let's address for our viewers, especially some of our senior citizens, the people are running out of their prescriptions. I know CVS, where I get a prescription, they, before the storm hit, had actually sent out a text and said, plan ahead. If you're going to be running out, come get it. And I thought, well, that's kind of a nice service. Didn't take advantage of it. Right. Kind of thinking this wouldn't really be that bad, but it was. And a lot of these places are closed. You're getting calls from people saying, I can't get to my doctor or I can't get my doctor's offices in open. Right. A lot of offices are still closed. Fortunately, many reopen today. Uh, for those that are closed, most have a physician on call. So hopefully uh, your medicine can be called in. Some pharmacies will release an emergency supply, a limited supply, even if you don't have refills uh, of non-controlled substances. Uh, but of course, the emergency departments are open. Obviously, if you can get with your doctor, that's the best course so you don't have to wait in an uh, emergency department that's already overwhelmed. So go ahead and call your doctor's office even if it's not open? Even if it's not open, go ahead and call just to let him or her know that you've run out of your blood pressure medicine or your insulin or whatever it is that you take and that you just need refills until the office opens up again and you can get in there. Okay. Um, would you advise them to try to stay away from going to the hospital for that? Because that's something that would overwhelm the hospital. The Certainly. Hospital focus uh, elsewhere. The hospitals in the area already have challenges, of course, uh, mm -hmm. with water issues. And so if you can avoid going to the emergency department for a non-emergent issue, that would be the best course of advice. Okay. Diet and exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was afraid I wasn't eating. We're eating, believe me, and, and Motor Supply just brought in another big spread. But it's key during this time for those who, are, who are, have suffered such damage. It's real easy probably to get in that mode of, let me just do one more thing, one more project. Right. You know, we've, we've got to 
you know, do something important in order to get the family to be able to go to sleep tonight kind of thing. It's really easy to, to well, obviously not get any exercise, but it's easy also to not even eat during the day or eat well. Correct. Um, you know, the grocery stores have been overrun, um, mm -hmm. and it's somewhat difficult to eat fresh produce right now because we're supposed to boil all of our water in the downtown mm -hmm. area. And so a lot of us end up eating more highly processed foods that may have more sodium, and which can affect blood pressure. Uh, probably not getting enough fiber if they're not getting enough fresh mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So those are things just to be mindful of uh, whenever we're in a crisis situation like this. And you and I are both, I know, I've known Todd for years, are bad at uh, turning off our work day and getting sleep, enough sleep. So don't do as we do, <laughs> do as we say, and what we say is what about sleep? Get plenty of sleep. Uh, and you need to, again, watch your diet and get exercise. Exercise is a great way to relieve stress. Mm -hmm. And this is a stressful time for a lot of people. Uh, this has disrupted schedules. It has disrupted lives. It's been financially challenging for a lot of people. And one of the best ways to relieve stress is to get some exercise. And a lot of folks who are used to exercising who aren't doing it now are having even more stress because they're not getting that regular routine that they're so accustomed to. So people who don't exercise and they're... Uh uh, carrying heavy wood beams and furniture that's water soaked and all of that. I'm guessing you're going to start seeing some people coming into the ER or certainly doctor's offices, uh, family physician, family practice physicians are going to see people coming in with some kind of injuries. Uh, we'll see lots of lifting injuries and then just people exhausted. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course people who are out of shape and then are all of a sudden trying to lift heavy furniture. That can be a challenge, especially if they have unknown underlying heart disease. Mm. All right. Anything else our viewers should know? You, you've covered so many wonderful things. Anything you want to leave them with as they just face uh, days, weeks, and even months ahead yeah, of some just, strenuous Again, be work. safe, be smart, uh, watch the diet and exercise, and just uh, take those steps to make sure that you're maintaining good health. And stay out of the water. Stay out of the water. All right. My friend, thank you so much. Dr. Todd Crump, the head of the, the emergency department at Lexington Medical Center, will put you back to work now. <laughs>